the first major protest since Tunisia's president seized executive power two months ago. Hundreds denounce what they call a coup. But Kai Saeed's supporters say he's carrying out the people's will. So what's next for Tunisia? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Imran Khan. Tunisia's political and constitutional crisis began in July when the president sacked the prime minister, suspended parliament and assumed executive power. Kai Saeed insisted it wasn't a coup and said the measures would only last 30 days. But two months on, he still hasn't appointed a prime minister. He hasn't revealed plans for reform and he's extended his emergency powers until further notice. On Saturday, opponents vented their frustration at the first major protest against the president. But Saeed's supporters were out in force as well. Now, we'll bring in our guests in just a moment. But first, this report from Dorsa Jabari. A rare show of public dissent against President Kais Saeed in the Tunisian capital. Thousands of people rallied in the center of Tunis on Saturday, chanting, shut down the coup, and we want a return to legitimacy. We followed the path of the revolution with its negatives and positives for 10 years. But what happened on July 25 took us back 50 years to autocracy, which we tried with Bourguiba and Ben Ali, but their policies were a failure and we couldn't advance. On July 25th, President Saeed dismissed Prime Minister Hisham Mahshishi, froze parliament and seized judicial power, insisting it was not a coup but others called it a threat to the region's few democracies. Saeed's supporters held a counter-demonstration chanting, the people want to dissolve parliament. The opposite side took advantage of the chaos following the schism and conflict between state agencies. They are the ones that went out to demonstrate today. On the other hand, we are the ones who consider ourselves supportive of the July 25th decisions and therefore support Qais Saeed. We came to preserve the state. President Saeed called the move to seize executive power an exceptional measure, a response to an economic and political crisis. The former constitutional law professor justified his decision by citing emergency measures in the Constitution that his critics and many legal scholars said did not support his intervention. Political leaders have complained about the Constitution since it was agreed in 2014. They want it to be changed to either a more directly presidential or a more directly parliamentary system. President Saeed says he plans to amend it, but a powerful union and Tunisia's largest party have objected to changing the constitution. Saeed is still to appoint a new prime minister, while millions struggle under economic and political stagnation. Dorsa Jabari, Al Jazeera. Let's bring in our guests in Tunis. Amel Azouz, a political scientist and a member of Tunisia's Ennahda Party. In Syracuse, New York, Mohamed Dia Hamami, a political science researcher at Syracuse's university's Maxwell School. And also in Tunis, Sharif al a political commentator. A warm welcome to you all. I'd like to begin uh, with you, Amel, in uh, Tunis. At some point, we're going to have to start to call this a coup. We haven't heard from Kai Saeed in a major way since this began. There's no reform plans that have been announced and there doesn't seem to be any movement. It has to be now a coup. So if your question is in the way we describe what has happened, if it is a coup or not, I can say, I can tell you that even uh, the law scholars, I mean, teachers of, of law in our university, there is a real controversy concerning uh, what happened. Some of them would say that this is a mere interpretation, okay, so it's a kind of giving oneself the, uh, the uh, prerogative to uh, interpret the text, the constitutional text, the way he sees it. However, there are other scholars and other law, law teachers uh, and professors would say this is a, a coup, a coup in the, uh, in the sense, in the, uh, in the legal technical, formal sense, uh, it is a coup, if you want so. If, if you consider that the monopoly of, uh, of powers, of authority in, in one hand, contrary to what we 
wrote in the Constitution of 2014, and I was one of those who uh, drafted the Constitution of 2014. Uh, uh, technically, there is, uh, there, is, there, is, there is a huge and uh, uh, a dangerous and a very uh, important violation of uh, the Constitution uh, of the January 2014. So as I understand it, Emil, you are stopping short of calling it a coup yourself. Uh, I've been, I, I told you, I told you that this is, there is a real controversy myself within what I've been telling you, even in the sense, in the technical, formal, legal sense, the way Mr. Said has uh, interpreted and has uh, behaved and has monopolized power since July the 25th. It, we cannot really describe it uh, uh, differently. Also in Tunis, Sharif al Qadi, often um, when we look at Tunisian politics, we understand that it's a system of dialogue. The dialogue does take place between all of the different parties. Are we in a moment where there are negotiations going on? We just simply don't know what they are. So far, and according to what we've been hearing or listening or even uh, reading from, from, analysis, uh, from analysts here, um, it seems pretty obvious that there are no kind of dialogue or no kind of uh, potential consensus, at least in the next few days or weeks. Maybe we should still wait uh, for the next upcoming days and weeks, even though we are waiting since July 25th, which is quite a long period. Especially, uh, this has been reflected on the recent polls when President Said has lost at least 10% of his uh, popularity, but still, he's still very popular here in Tunisia. But for a dialogue, I think that this is uh, one of the issues we are facing, that there is no dialogue uh, whatsoever so far, uh, in addition to uh, the statements and declaration of President Said that there will be no dialogue with, uh, with corrupt politicians or corrupt elite or what he he called the uh, mafia and lobbyists who were in control before July 25th. This has been the, uh, the position of, Sy of President Said even before July 25th. So for the dialogue, uh, unfortunately, uh, so far, there are no signs of uh, potential dialogue. And we are waiting for the next steps now from President Said since he is, let's say, at the uh, head of the executive and uh, by de facto, at the head of uh, some sort of uh, legislative uh, branch or legislative, since he's legislating by presidential decrees or presidential orders. So, so far, no dialogue. Uh, Mohammed, I'm going to come to you in just a second, but I want to put that point to uh, Amel in Tunis also. Amel, no dialogue or is there dialogue? Uh, I don't really agree with your guest from uh, Tunis. Um, I would say there, there is a sort of... Um, effervescence these last days. At the beginning, yes, there was this kind of uh, surprise or shock, or call it what you, what, whatever you want. But these uh, last weeks, I, I think um, I can see figures, I can see uh, activists, political activists uh, uh, from all the political spectrum coming together. They are trying, there are, of course, it is but a beginning of a, uh, a dialogue. Um, also from uh, from the so uh, from the organization of uh, civil society, but especially uh, political elites and from the political class, I can see that uh, there is a change. Think things are are starting to change, and people who have come together before 2011 and uh, after 2011 uh, uh, don't forget. After 2011, there were assassinations. 2013, two big assassinations. But in spite of that. The, the political class ha have been able to come together. I, I, say, I, I, I think that these same people who were successful to come together are trying now to come together. And uh, I'm giving you uh, facts. I'm not just analyzing. I'm giving you facts that um, uh, political activists and the event, yesterday events, was uh, one among, uh, you can see many of these uh, 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 political activists ca coming together in that symbolic um, uh, event in front of uh, or in Shara in Habib Bourguiba Avenue. Uh, Mohammed in Syracuse, is um, Kai Said running out of constitutional cover? He gave himself the deadline of 30 days. No one forced that upon him. He said to himself, I've got 30 days, I'm going to announce reforms, I'm going to announce new leadership. That hasn't happened. Uh, are we getting to the stage now where it's simply illegal what he's doing? Well, I think, first of all, we should 
make it clear in, on July 25th, he did not uh, announce any intentions. And that's actually one of the major problems that we've been facing during the last few weeks in Tunisia. We don't have clear vision on what uh, will happen during the next um, few weeks or months or how long this uh, state of exception will last. Um, regarding your question on the legality, um, I don't think it's relevant anymore in the discussions in Tunisia because many accept it as a kind of de facto um, and are discussing the, uh, the amendment of the new constitution. So whether or not it's legal, I think there is a wide consensus that the Article 80 does not allow the president to um, suspend the, the, the parliament or dissolve the, the, the executive or um, even amend the constitution. In fact, uh, and ironically, uh, the only co-author of, um, of President Kai Said when he was back in the days a professor of law um, is known for his uh, legal opinion on how um, we cannot amend the constitution in the state of exception. So, so far, the Article 80 is used, is being used as Said to more like a justification for his actions than um, anything else. But well, isn't that a dangerous precedent, Mohammed? If if there's silence from Kai Said himself, there's no real reform plans. As you say, at the very beginning weren't announced. Here we are two months later, still no reform plans. Isn't that a dangerous precedent that he's simply just trying to wait this out? Yeah, well, although he was that explicit about what he wants to do in terms of reforms, economic or social, um, we, we know that since 2011, he's been advocating for the change of the constitution toward a specific direction, um, a form of um, political regime where the executive powers will be concentrated at the level of presidency, but at the same time, um, the legislative body would be elected in a very unusual way to a hype of the centralized process and kind of indirect elections. And even people who are supporting Kai Said right now on his... Um, recent actions against a uh, few political actors or against the parliament are not supportive of the um, the, system, the decentralized system he is advocating for. Um, so what is actually more concerning is not the what he wants to do is, rather, like you said, the absence of any vision on how to address the major issues for which Tunisians uh, have been protesting and like meaning more specifically unemployment um, and uh, poverty and, and other social economic related issues. Sharif, these were, this was a major protest, but it wasn't as big as we've seen in Tunisia uh, in the past. Um, it was in many ways restrained. It was much more about putting political pressure to come up with an announcement, or was this the beginning of a new movement in Tunisia? Well, let's say it's a, a big protest, maybe um, for, for the media or for, uh, uh, or for the, let's say, ex from the external point of view. But what happened yesterday, just, I mean, um, only hundreds of people gathered in downtown Tunis, at best a thousand people uh, gathered to, gathered to, uh, to oppose side decisions. So uh, this could be, of course, the beginning maybe of the um, of the new of a series of other protests uh, across Tunisia or even at the same place in the in the capital. Uh, but actually, I don't think that would be just at least for the upcoming weeks. Uh, this won't be, uh, I mean, as big as we maybe uh, would like to think to think or would like to to, to say because um, it's pretty obvious that um, the people that gathered yesterday, they were rejected or they are rejected, even according to recent polls, they are just rejected by the population. And that's why they are supporting President, President Said's decision. They are not in support of President Said, maybe program or vision of, uh, or of his uh, uh, bottom-up democracy or direct democracy, as we may call it. But they are just supportive of him because he simply neutralized them, if we can uh, say this way. So they are, unfortunately, they are seen as the uh, uh, corrupt political elite 
who failed to address the uh, the problems of the real problems of Tunisia in terms of economy, in terms of reforms. When I, uh, in terms of reforms of the judiciary, the fiscal reforms, the police reforms. And of course, in terms of the uh, um, economic reforms, because uh, what we uh, were facing before July 25th and even now, uh, to a certain extent, is that, okay, we have freedoms, we have uh, uh, free elections or uh, uh, some sort of free elections, but it's not delivering economically. And this is what the revolution was about in 2011. People were first protesting for their economic rights, for their social. Sir, sure, let's put your let's rights. put your point to Amel here, in uh, also in Tunis. Um, we seem to be hearing that, you know, he hasn't addressed the real problems of Tunisia, structural problems of Tunisia, which aren't going to go away overnight. But he is popular. Is he listening to these protests or is he ignoring them because he feels he has the political and popular support? Let me first of all tell you uh, that um, uh, it has become clear that all that Mr. Said uh, has wanted to, to, to do or told people he'd like to do, he didn't, he, he was unsuccessful to do it or to realize or to achieve it. Uh, he could, I myself, I wrote this, he could have then all of these promises, he could have realized them and achieved them in a very, in a, in a much easier way and within, within the context and uh, the frame of uh, uh, the constitutional legality. Um, uh, I, I can tell you, he could have um, presented and the, and, and the constitution gives him this, uh, this right and this prerogative uh, presenting initiatives, etc. cetera. Uh, what happened yesterday, however, uh, the, the only alibi for Mr. Said was uh, this is the will of people, popular will. I'm behaving uh, uh, in such a way because this is how people wanted me. It's, it, it's people who wanted me to, to, to behave in such a way. The importance of what happened yesterday is that there is this message, this embolic, regardless of the member of those who were there, because this is a strategy, not calling people in a huge member was meant. We are not in front of uh, showing or, uh, if you want, exhibiting a certain uh, um, power. No, we are giving, or people who gathered yesterday are trying to give a message that, yes, there are people who went out on July the 25th, but there is also another part of people who uh, uh, went yesterday to the street to say, to, 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 and to say something else. To, to, and this has changed the, the, uh, the equation, and this showed that uh, um, a part of, uh, of the street, if you want, and of people, uh, considers what happened on July the 25th uh, um, a coup. And he asks for, and yesterday's uh, slogans, um, uh, they, they, they said that they wanted uh, um, the state's institutions back. They want constitution back. They want the laws back. They want legality and legitimacy, both of them, if, if, if you'd like to go into this uh, uh, dialogue of legitimacy and legality. They want everything back. So uh, I guess uh, uh, what happened yesterday shows that nobody in Tunisia could do anything in front of all these challenges, political, economic, social challenges. No one alone can do anything, including Mr. Said as a uh, a president of the republic, including majoritarian parties. Um, so the only solution, as I can see, is, is not individual. The solution should come uh, in a sort of a, a consensus, a dialogue, a consensus, a national dialogue within and under the umbrella of uh, the constitution. Uh, Mohammed in Syracuse, what do you think of what Amal has just said? Is there a potential for dialogue here? Well, so, so far, uh, Al Said was isolating himself. He did not meet with major political actors since um, July 26, at least, if we're talking about the labor union. Um, however, uh, so, so, uh, so in other words, we are not really seeing any form of dialogue right now. Uh, it may happen in the future, but we're not there yet. Um, however, regarding uh, yesterday's protest, I do think I think it's important. It was important because it it visibly showed that there is some level of um, discontent from what Said is doing. However, we should not extrapolate from the slogans and and um, assume that they are representative of what all Tunisians want or political actors in Tunisia want.
both the polls and the public declarations of, uh, so the polls represented the opinion of the masses and the, the public declaration of um, key political actors show that there is little interest in the return of the pre-July 25th um, situation. Uh, all those who are in favor of a return to a constitutional order are in favor of, or at least most of them, are in favor of constitutional amendment. Um, we still don't know exactly what this constitutional amendment will, will look like, um, but people were not satisfied from, this, from the situation uh, the way it exists before July 25th. So we should not um, read that much into yesterday's uh, protests. Sharif, uh, in Tunis also, one of the biggest weapons that Kai Sayed has in his arsenal right now is the fact that Tunisians have been through so much and they're fed up with corrupt politicians, mismanagement, and he's using that to justify his actions in this constitutional crisis that it's under. Is it a case that Tunisians are just simply fed up and they don't want to come out on the streets and they just want some sort of stability, which is what this is offering them? Some, yeah, in, this, is, this is true or partially, partially true. Tunisians, they want stability, they want economic reforms, they want the democracy that delivers. Uh, from yesterday's protest, the, the main lesson that we've, that we've learned so far is that uh, to protest freely in Tunis and to express the, the opinions, uh, the one's opinions, uh, despite the differences, is still some sort of normal thing in Tunisia, uh, fortunately, uh, so far. Whether we are in favor of Qais Syed or against his decisions, whether we are in favor of the former parliamentary coalition or not, this is quite normal and this is now um, some, some, some sort of uh, unconscious thing in Tunisia that uh, free, but free speech and free protests are some normal thing. Uh, concerning your question about whether Tunisians are fed up, yes, they are fed up. That's quite obvious because when we uh, have a, a recent, uh, uh, even starting from uh, the 2019 elections, they voted for a person out of the political sphere and the poly classic, at least classic political. Uh, uh, Sharif, we are running out of time. I would like to come to uh, Amel uh, just for one final question. Amel, at what point does the Inada party just put pressure on him to come up with something? to come up with some sort of announcement, some sort of reform plan. When does that happen? It's already been 30, it's already been over the 30 day limit. I don't think, I think Nahda now is behaving within, within uh, of course, a, um, a, a sort of uh, coalition or at least uh, Nahda party is trying to, uh, to work or to behave within and trying to also to collaborate with um, the political class existing now and who are really willing to, to, to get into a front, a collective front, to save democracy in Tunisia and to save the uh, transition, to the democratic transition. Um, apart from that, uh, I, um, I can't see any, uh, uh, any other. In all its communiques, it's been uh, asking Mr. Saeed to, uh, uh, to review and to get back to uh, the constitutional Legality, but at the same time working with the other um, uh, representatives of the uh, political and uh, the social um, uh, uh, spectrum, if you want, uh, in the country to, to, to get out of this uh, deadlock. There is a deadlock, uh, just if you allow me uh, uh, to uh, interact a little bit with your um, uh, guest, Sharif. I think there is, I, I do agree with him, there is a deadlock. Uh, the deadlock is uh, food on the table. Uh, is Mr. Saeed today able, alone, to provide and, uh, uh, these challenges, the socioeconomic challenges, to fight uh, um, corruption uh, uh, on his own? This is the greatest question and the greatest challenge. The answer for me and for all who are following, of course, they would say, of course not. Uh, the problems of Tunisia are structural problems. I've been in the assembly, I've been in the government, uh, uh, in 2015, and I know, uh, I, 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 I mean what I'm saying, uh, Tunisia's problems are, are structural and deep, and they need, they, they, they need a, a, a national dialogue, um, uh, which, as I, I told you earlier, nobody, even, even if we have early elections and we have a, a majoritarian party, I don't think a majoritarian party 
alone or two majoritarian parties alone would be able or could be able to solve these problems. So we have no other chance and people are working. I know um, the horizon is not clear enough, but there is a will. And I do believe in, uh, uh, in, uh, in this will of, uh, of national democr democratic people, this will to uh, overcome this crisis. And when, whenever there is a will, I'm sure there will be a way and uh, uh, a way out and a solution. I want to thank all our guests, Amel Azuz, uh, Mohamed Dia Hamami and Sharif Al Qadi. And I want to thank you too for watching. Now you can see the program anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can also join the conversation on Twitter. We are at AJ Inside Story. From me, Imran Khan, and the entire team here. Bye for now.